a little recap of uh, of the trig substitution. We are looking at um, three radicals, and I'm going to rewrite the table, but I'm going to augment it a little bit. I'll give you some more information. So we are looking at the radical, and there are three radicals. We're looking at uh, a squared minus the square root of a squared minus six squared. We are looking at the square root of x squared minus a squared. I'm sorry, a squared plus x squared first, and then finally x squared minus a squared. Okay, so those are the three radicals. The substitution will be the following. And you may want to think about a equal as, as 1. So we're looking at the square root of 1 minus x squared. x squared has to be, uh, the absolute value of x has to be less than 1. And a suitable function that does it for us is the, is the sine. So we'll substitute x with a times sine theta. And the domain that we'll be using, we'll use the first quadrant for positive values and the fourth quadrant for negative values. So we let theta go from negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2. For this substitution, when we have the square root of a squared plus x squared, x can be anything, any value. So a suitable substitution would be the tangent as the a range of the tangent is uh, negative infinity to infinity. Again, we'll take, uh, for positive value, we'll take the first quadrant, except pi over, two, oh, I'm sorry, negative pi over 2, the, th the fourth quadrant, and for negative value and for positive value, we'll take the first quadrant. But the actual values pi over 2 and negative pi over 2 are not included as those are the asymptote, the vertical asymptote of the tangent. Remember, the tangent is cosine in the denominator, and cosine of pi over 2 is 0. Here, if you think about a being 1, you have x squared minus 1 squared. The absolute value of x has to be greater than 1, so the suitable function will be the secant or the cosecant. We choose to work with the secant, so we have x equal a times the secant. The secant, for positive value, will pick up the first quadrant, so we can go 0 to pi over 2. 0 is included as the secant of 0 is 1, but pi over 2 is not because 1 of the cosine is undefined for pi over 2. And for the negative value, we'll pick up the third quadrant. So we let theta goes from pi for the negative value to 3 pi over 2, like so. Again, 3 pi over 2 is not included. Finally, what are the identities, the trig identities that we'll be using for each? Well, if you think about the sign, and again, one more time, I'd like you to think about a being 1. So 1 minus x squared becomes 1 minus sine squared. And 1 minus sine squared is the cosine squared. So the substitution will be 1 minus sine squared equal the cosine squared a equals 1, so you have 1 plus tangent squared, well that will be the secant squared. And finally, again, if you think about a being 1, we are looking at square, secant squared minus 1, well, if tan 1 plus tangent squared equal to secant squared, subtract 1, you have tangent squared equal secant squared minus 1, so secant squared minus 1 will be the tangent squared. So those are the three substitution, the three identities that we'll use. Uh, I gave you the first example yesterday, and today I'll start with example 2 in this 
on this topic. And we'll look at the uh, area of the ellipse. So this is the first example. Uh, we need to find the area of a generic list, uh, ellipse this is an ellipse whose center is at the origin and the general form would be x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equals 1 so how this ellipse look like it has vertices at uh, a0, negative a0, so one vertex is here and the other is here. And those are the horizontal, and then the vertical will be at 0b and negative, 0, negative b, like so. And the ellipse, again, the center at the origin, if we draw it, looks like that. And of course when A equals B the ellipse becomes a circle. Now we want to find the area of the, of the ellipse and we can see from the sketch uh, that we have symmetry about the both x-axis and y-axis so it's enough to calculate the area of one quadrant and multiply it by three by 4, I don't know why I said 3, uh, add the 3 remaining quadrant. So we are looking at the graph captured capture between the x-axis, y-axis and the curve y equal f of x and in the first quadrant both x and y are greater than or equal to 0 like so. So we start by solving for y. We're looking here, so you, uh, well, let's start with x squared over y over a squared plus y squared over b squared equals 1, and this leads to uh, y squared over b squared equals 1 minus x squared over a squared, and I'm going to write it uh, using common denominator, so it would be a squared minus x squared over a squared, like so, and finally to get the y, this is still equal to y squared over b squared, I'm sorry, y squared itself will be b squared times this quantity, Thank you. Y squared over B squared. And then multiply by B squared, so we end up having B squared over A squared times the quantity A squared minus X squared, like so. And finally, Y squared, Y by itself, will be, since we are looking at both Y is positive, we we'll take just the plus part. So the square root of b squared over a squared is simply b over a, and we have the radical. Okay? Remember, y is greater than or equal to 0 in the first quadrant. So now we need to integrate this, the shaded area and multiply it by 4. Okay? So the, this, the integral of uh, this function is one-fourth of the area Yeah, I keep the right side as okay. the last one that uh, is so.
technology. So what is the area? Well, the area uh, the area of the ellipse equals four times uh, the area of of uh, of the first quadrant. So a will be four times the integral b over a square root of um, a squared minus x squared bless you dx and the boundaries will be on, on x will go from 0 to a okay so we can proceed from here So um, what we do is just b over a are numbers. So we have 4b over a, the integral from 0 to a, and the radical a squared, a squared minus x squared dx. And if you look at back at uh, where we started, this is the first type. Okay, uh, So the substitution is x equal a times sine theta. So let's go ahead and do the substitution. We let x equals a times sine theta, and therefore dx will be a times cosine theta d theta. And uh, that's that's pretty much what we we needed to do here. Uh, we need also to adjust the boundaries. So boundaries. When x equals zero, it means that a sine theta equals zero. Or and this happened when remember we're talking about the, the interval, the domain between negative pi over two to positive pi over two. This happened when theta equals zero. We also know that sine theta equals zero for pi and two pi, but those are outside the one-to-one -one domain. We do it because here we, we're looking for the inverse value and remember the sine and the cosine are not invertible functions. They fail the horizontal line test. They're not one-to-one. -one. But if you restrict the domain, you make them one-to-one, -one, you make them invertible, and therefore on this domain, theta equals zero is one solution. The other boundary is x equals a or because x is a sine theta, well a sine theta equal a, divide both sides by a and get sine theta, sine theta equals 1, and in our domain this will happen when theta equals pi over 2. So these, these are the new boundaries, and now we can proceed. The area will be 4b over a, the integral, new boundaries, 0 to pi over 2, Substitution, okay? The radical is now a squared is minus x squared, but x squared is a squared sine squared of theta, like so. And dx is a times cosine theta d theta. Now, remember, we talked about the identity that we'll use well, you have a common factor, which is a squared. You factor the square root of a squared, which is a, so you end up having the integral from 0 to pi over 2. Here you have a, and the radical now is 1 minus sine squared theta, which we know it to be the square root of cosine squared. So this a and this a, we're going to reduce each other, but we have another a right here from the uh, differential, from a cosine theta d theta. So we're going to end up having 4ab, right, and the integral 0 to pi over 2. The square root of 1 minus sine squared is cosine theta. We have another cosine theta right here. so d theta, and this is the cosine squared. What identity we use to get rid of the cosine squared? 
Yo, folks. No. When when we have cosine squared, one half. Right. We cannot use one minus sine squared because the differential is only d theta. Remember, this is where we use the half angle identity. So it would be the integral zero to pi over two, one half times one plus cosine two theta, d theta. So, at this point, we are looking at 2ab, the integral 0 to pi over 2. And now we take the antiderivatives. I, I wrote the integral symbol, so might as well go ahead and finish this up like so. This is totally redundant step. All right, the antiderivative of 1 is theta. The antiderivative of cosine 2 theta is? Come on. Almost correct. What, am you, what are you missing? Over 2, or 1 half. Okay, because when you take the derivative of the sine, you get 2 sine 2 theta, you get 2 cosine theta, but you have only 1. So, turn out that this is really doesn't matter because sine of 0 is 0 and sine of 2 times 2 2 times pi over 2 is sine of pi which is 0 so we have 2ab times pi over 2 plus 0 minus 0 so the solution will be a b pi and this is a well-known solution, uh, the area of the um, of the ellipse. Um, just for those of you who are comfortable with numbers, uh, if we write the area of the ellipse, x squared, let's say, over 81, plus y squared over 16 equals 1, uh, is... Um, this is 9 squared, so we're looking at 9. This is 4 squared, 9 times 4 times pi, or 36 pi. Just those of you who like to deal with numbers.